Hello everyone, this is Darkfire Slide here to explain today how the revolution mechanic works in Europa Universalis 4. Um, this is a really arcane mechanic, is probably the best way I would describe it. Um, because it's a disaster that can occur, but it can actually help your country, which is not true for probably the rest of the disasters. Um, and it gives just really massive bonuses. It's almost kind of like an Easter egg. Um, it, it's really hard to get to fire as well. You have to ha the year has to be at least 1750 for you to do this. You need to have negative stability as well. Those are the only two um, conditions that you need to actually get this disaster to start ticking up. But the problem is the monthly progress is affected by uh, a couple of really strange modifiers that if you're playing well probably will never be an issue to you unless you manually try to force it to happen. Um, but because the benefits are so uh, great for, for you know having a revolution um, and letting the uh, revolutionaries take over your country, uh, you may wish to force this. And I'm going to show you how to do that today if you so desire. So I just got an event for my stability to go down. And so the revolution has begun ticking down. Now, the actual uh, progress for the revolution has some really strange and uh, situational uh, requirements to actually tick up. So we have one of those requirements. Our prestige is less than zero. So we have negative prestige. And that's going to cause a monthly progress of uh, plus one. So that means it's going to take about, you know, by itself, about nine years to actually fire. Two of the other requirements both revolve, actually three of the other requirements revolve around loans. If you have ten loans, uh, monthly progress will go up by uh, 0 0.5, but which by itself uh, will take about 17 years to, for the disaster to actually fire. Um, I've done some extensive testing on this. <laughs> and... Uh, if you have at least 25 loans, monthly progress is going to be uh, plus one instead, which is going to take uh, nine years. Um, if your country is bankrupt for whatever reason, like I said, if you're doing well, this real none of these are really going to be active issues. Um, the loans you can actually take out yourself if you want this to happen to you. So, the uh, if you if your country is bankrupt, you have a monthly progress of plus two. And there's one other modifier. Let me. Look at the wiki here. So, oh yeah, if you have a war exhaustion of at least five, it's going to go up by 1% uh, per month. So, you know, it can happen while you're at war, but only if you're at war for a really long time and you don't feel like spending Diplo to reduce your war exhaustion for whatever reason. So, those are the basics of how you actually get the disaster to trigger. Remember, you need negative one stability, and it, the year has to be at least 1750. Also, it's worth mentioning, you have to be in Europe for this to happen. So, uh, Europe includes everything out to uh, Russia as well, and you have to be a Western tech group. So, something to bear in mind. And what I'm actually going to do now is pause the recording, and then I'll pick up where the disaster actually fires. So, I'll see you in just a second. Alright, so here we are. We, uh, we are at 99% for the revolution to fire. We're going to unpause and we're going to let the revolution fire. Provence wanted to rival us for some reason. Okay, so now we have a revolution. We lose, I believe, three stability, two stability, I don't know, um, for sure. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we lose 10 prestige for this happening. And then, uh, eight, yeah, lose three stability. So 18 revolutionary regiments uh, pop up in a random province. Or a couple of random provinces, anyway. And let's see. Where is Bessarabia? I believe it's over here, isn't it? Why can't I remember where that province is? Oh goodness. Okay, yeah. So there they are. So the so the uh, disaster starts. You can instantly raise your stability. Um, if you want to end it. You just have to get your stability up to one and have fewer rebel control provinces than one. So, again, with uh, the theme of this being a really, really easy thing to, to prevent. Um, and to get the Revolutionary Republic uh, government form, which is what you want out of this, 
Um, I'll go ahead and show uh, what that does. If I can go to... Actually, we're not high enough tech yet. Okay, so Revolutionary Republic gives you uh, Tolerance of Heretics plus two, uh, monthly autonomy change depending on what rank your government is, and lastly, it gives you Morale of Armies plus 10%. Um, also, you're still a Republic, so that's pretty cool. And uh, also, your flag changes depending... Um, on historically whatever flag your country had in like when it became a uh, republic more or less into the modern era or um, just depending on what your uh, country's quote unquote base colors are so anyway um, now we have to deal with these revolutionaries I, li I like how the rebels didn't actually spawn there maybe they needed a couple days so anyway when the disaster starts um, rebels are going to start popping up everywhere and what you want the revolutionaries to do is take over your capital. This, um, if you've ever played Victoria 2, this is going to be a very familiar mechanic to you. Um, so what you, what I'm going to do, and what you would want to do if you want the rebels to take over and form your new uh, government, um, is kind of disable all the forts around your capital. And if you have a capital fort, obviously disable it. Let the rebels just take that over. Just let them have it, and then instantly the disaster will end and you will become a revolutionary republic. Um, for the time being though, we have to worry about the other revolutionaries and you may think to yourself, oh well I'll just let the revolutionaries win that way it'll just happen by itself. Well the problem is if you let the revolutionary rebels that spawn uh, do their business, they'll actually force you to become a constitutional republic. Which really isn't what you want. Now, it's ironic because I'm already a constitutional republic as Bosnia because of how I played this, uh, this campaign. So, all, all that would happen instead is that you get, you lose 50 prestige and a leader with a strong claim appears. Um, so now we just have to deal with this. And I think what I may do is, uh, you'll get a lot of terrible events when this happens, by the way. But what I may do uh, at this junction again is uh, pause the recording wait until the rebels are at our capital and then I can show you what happens so I'll see you in a second once again okay so I just got an event that caused rebels to pop up in my capital and I know this might be a very disjointed recording but we're just gonna let these uh, rebels siege down my capital and uh, this this actually I got really lucky here um, we, we can actually just do this since they're already sieging down our capital, but... Um, yeah, you'll get a lot of events to pop up rebels, and you want to contain the rebels that aren't near your capital. Um, and encourage the ones that are near your capital by, like, disabling the forts, for example. Um, so we're just going to wait for the siege to progress, and then I will show you what it's like to be a uh, republic. Or a uh, revolutionary republic, I should say. And, uh, yeah... I'll, I'll explain that once it happens, but... So we're just gonna wait for this to siege down. Shouldn't take too much longer here. Watch them, uh... You know, get up to like 98% and they still can't siege it down for some reason. <laughs> it's like the one time you want them to actually siege down... Yeah, see disease outbreak. <laughs> well! Take your time. I... Okay. Alright, so they've taken over our capital, and next month the... Okay, so the revolution is here. So we get this long block of text. If you want to read that, you know, do it when you when it happens to you. And you get a lot of stuff that happens here. So uh, Bosnia will become the main source of the, of the revolution. Uh, which sounds really interesting. And it is. It's really cool, actually. Um, all the revolutionaries disband. You gain five mer uh, mercantilism. Mercantilism, I should say. You get instability, you change to a revolutionary republic, and uh, you get all these, you know, really good modifiers. Morale of armies, tons of heretics, uh, monthly autonomy change, a diplomat. Well, actually, those, that's the uh, diplomat and the national focus are from uh, my government rank, but... Um, and then you also get your republican cultural sufferance, which, if you didn't know, uh, republics get a cultural su uh, sufferance modifier for non-accepted cultures, which reduces their unrest, increases local tax modifier, and manpower modifier. Um, also, your current ruler dies, which, you know, sucks, but at the same time... Look, we're a republic now, and first and foremost, notice the lovely new flag we have. Um, every country that does this gets a neat little tricolored flag. Um, and it's dependent on, historically, what that country had. 
at the time period, or um, it's based on the quote, or uh, not quote, but uh, the colors, the color scheme that it uses, or uh, that like a country uses for its flag. So if you make a custom nation, for example, the three primary colors you pick are going to be what's on your revolutionary flag. So, well, like the military leader. Right, so the uh, revolution will end, you lose all your terrible modifiers. Um, you lose nationalism, imperialism, and instead you gain this lovely little spread the revolution Cassus Belly, um, which is really interesting. So let's just go. It works a lot like imperialism, except it's a Cassus Belly you only have against non-revolutionary uh, non, uh, re nations, I should say. Um, also, your uh, nation tag changes to revolutionary, uh, whatever country you happen to be. Um, now, it's worth noting, France has its own special revolution chain, so you don't have to go through this. But for every other nation in Europe, I'm pretty sure that this is the way you have to go if you want to become revolutionary. Um, now, the main bonus of this, in addition to the government type, which you may not think is all that great, if you are the first country to do this, if you are the source of the revolution, you get a lot of bonuses. So you get 50% more score. You get an additional morale of armies plus 10%, national manpower modifier plus 10%, land force limit modifier and naval force limit modifier of plus 40% each, land maintenance minus 50%, naval maintenance minus 50%, monthly war exhaustion minus 0.15, and minus 50% unjustified demands. So if you weren't already out of control in whatever, whoever you were playing as, you, you now are. You... <laughs> You can get obscene, obscenely powerful with this. And I think that this is really like the best reason to become revolutionary. Um, because if you can kind of force it to happen, like I did, if you're in a good like position to do that, you can get just these really powerful bonuses. Now we're going to look at the uh, Spread the Revolution Cassus Belly, which doesn't work the same way you probably think it would. You would think that there would be an option... Um, as part of the war goal to force a country to become revolutionary. That's not exactly how it works. It more or less works like imperialism, except that you get a couple of um, goals for the war that aren't, uh, they don't work, you know, they, you don't get them for a lot of other Cassus Bellies is what I mean to say. So, as we, as we look here, you get a 50% aggressive expansion, 150% prestige, and 50% cost for Conquest, claim, revocation, liberation of vassals, liberation of countries. So those two are really cool, uh, liberating countries and, you know, really weakening somebody without uh, spending the diplo points to do that. Forced conversion, uh, religious conversion, uh, monetary reparations, enforced vassalage, and annulment of treaties are all part of the war goal uh, for this Casus Belli. So it really is, uh, it's imperialism plus is what I would call it. Um... Sadly, there isn't really a good way, there isn't a good way to force the revolution to happen to anyone. The best you can do, really, is to support uh, revolutionaries in a country. Um, once the, and this is really important, it's important, if you want to actually spread the revolution, you need to um, unlock revolutionary uh, republics at Tech 31, uh, at whoever you're doing this with, and then support revolutionary rebels in that country. So yeah, this is uh, this is how revolutions work in EU4. Um, if there's anything I left out, um, leave a comment and I'll try to explain it. Um, you get, like I said, you get some really cool bonuses out of this, and it's not really intuitive how you force this to happen. Um, and the wiki is not very good at explaining how to do this or why it's good to do this either. But I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you want to see more in the future, just just ask, and I'll make more guides. I'm thinking of doing a Let's Play soon as well. So, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.